This morning, I'd like to start a conversation with you about truth and about what it means to speak and seek and be guided by truth. I wanna talk about truth today because we are living through a time when the value of truth is under threat and also because our tradition has so much to teach us about it. And the Torah portion we're reading today, Parshat Yitro, invites us into that conversation very directly. Every year I learn something new from Yitro, not only from the Parsha named after him, but from Yitro himself. Yitro is Moses's father-in-law. He's a Midianite priest, a non-Jew, and a deeply wise and loving man. Besides God, Yitro is the only other figure in the Torah who teaches and advises Moses, and Moses heeds his words with as much honor as he heeds God's. For all God's warnings about falling under the spell of non-Israelite practices and being wary of human authority figures, God does not interfere or meddle in the conversations between Moses and Yitro. God allows Yitro's advice to influence Moses and Israelite society as deeply as God's own commandments. Of all the impact Yitro has on Moses though, he's most famous for teaching him how to delegate. When Yitro hears about the Israelites exodus from Egypt and comes to the Sinai wilderness, bringing Moses's wife and children, Yitro sees Moses adjudicating disputes among the Israelites every day from morning to evening. We talked about this a little bit last night. And he says to Moses, why are you doing this work all by yourself? This thing that you're doing is not good. You're going to wear yourself out like this. And Yitro advises Moses to appoint judges from among the Israelites and to delegate minor cases to them so that he can judge the major ones and still have the energy to lead the people. And I like to assume that with this advice, Yitro is also urging Moses to spend a little less time at the office and a little more time at home with his family. But what caught my attention this year was not Yitro's wise advice to create a sustainable system of government. What caught my attention this year were the character traits that Yitro tells Moses to seek out among the people he selects to serve as judges. Yitro says to Moses, you shall seek out from among all the people an Sheikh Hail Yirei Elohim, people of honor who revere God, and an Sheikh Emet Sone Vatsa, people of truth who spurn unjust gain. It is these kinds of people, he says, that you should appoint as chiefs over the people. When it comes to selecting worthy judges over a nation, Yitro teaches Moses and teaches us that they must be honorable, humble, and righteous. And he teaches that they should be anshe emet, people of truth. In studying this a little bit yesterday with Rabbi Tzadok, she pointed out wisely that Yitro doesn't say simply that the judges should tell the truth or be able to distinguish truth from falsehood. She said, he says it more generally that the judges should be people of truth. So what I wanna know is what does it mean to be on Shea Emet? And how might we ourselves learn to be on Sheamet and to set, our, to set over ourselves leaders and judges who are on Sheamet? Without any further reading, Yitro's words alone offer us an idea of who on Sheamet are. He says the judges should be on Sheamet Sone Vatsa, that is, people who are Sone Vatsa, who do not seek power through money or violence, who do not serve to become wealthy or to manipulate for their own benefit. And Ish Emet, he says, is someone who prioritizes the greater good, 
making his judgments based on what is true and right, not on what is in his own interests. Toward the beginning of the Parsha, it says that Yitro went El Hamidbar. He went to the wilderness to reunite Moses with his wife and sons. And Rashi teaches that the verse specifies that Yitro went into the wilderness, a fact we should have already known, to teach us that Yitro himself was an, was an Ish Emet. How so? He was an Ish Emet because he left the luxury and splendor of his high stature in his own Midianite society and opted to brave the Sinai wasteland in order to hear the words of Torah. Unlike other kings and chiefs we know from the Hebrew Bible who would rather stay comfortable in their high chambers, unreceptive to the words of foreigners, Yitro seeks out truth wherever and whomever it may be coming from. Centuries later, Rabbi Nachman of Breslov affirmed this view in a chillingly relevant statement. Rabbi Nachman teaches, one who always wants to be victorious is very intolerant of truth. The truth may be staring him in the face, but because he's determined to win at all costs, he ignores it completely. If you want to find the real truth, you must rid yourself of the urge to win. Then you will be able to see the truth if you wish. We learn then from Rashi, from Yitro, and from Rabbi Nachman. We learn that if we want to know the truth and be guided by it, we must consider our motivations. We must ask ourselves, and our leaders must ask themselves, am I seeing the whole picture? Am I hearing all the voices that hold a stake in this? Am I willing to let go of being right for what is true? Of course, the conversation about truth extends much further than this. We must consider, as the rabbis did, the fact that there are many situations in which multiple truths might live in tension with one another. There's the famous story of Beit Hillel and Beit Shammai, two schools of thought who argued about a particular legal matter. And in the midst of presenting the two sides, a bat kol, a voice from God, from heaven, rang out declaring, Elu ve'elu divreich Elohim chayim. The arguments of these and of those are true. But instead of merely accepting this, the rabbis make a decision and rule in Beit Hillel's favor. Why? Because Beit Hillel would always teach Beit Shammai's words before their own. We learn two things from this story. First, that we can't always afford to agree to disagree. A verdict has to be reached, especially when human lives are at stake. And second, we should favor those who actively learn and consider the words of those with whom they disagree. Our rabbis also consider more nuanced questions about truth, like in the case where it may be inappropriate even to tell the truth. There are many stories in the Talmud of, in which the rabbis encourage people to actually favor being kind over being brutally honest, say when complimenting a bride or welcoming guests. In those cases, it is more important to be kind and compassionate than to reveal what you may know to be true. But for all their willingness to probe the value of truth, there is no question that truth and truthfulness are absolute and unequivocal values to the rabbis and to our tradition, that we must always aspire to truth. The rabbis go as far as to say that the Holy One, blessed be God, hates a person who says one thing with her mouth and another in her heart. I knew that in opening this conversation about truth, 
truth with a capital T, that we would barely begin to scrape the surface of what it means to pursue and live according to truth. I knew I was opening a can of worms and would not be able in a short drash to get at the core of what it means to be an Isha Met, an Isha Met. But nonetheless, I feel it is our sacred duty at all times, and especially now, for us to take the time to dig deep into what it means to be on Shayamet and to aspire to be so. The leading thinker and teacher um, and the current president of the Shalom Hartman Institute in North America, Yehuda Kurtzer, has written very wisely. Because of phenomena like the now former president maligning the news media or bots writing fake news stories, and I would add, overall, a culture that seems to spurn truth. It's not just a question of letting different truths coexist now, but of defending the truth against falsehood. Yehuda says that people tend to go looking for facts to support an existing worldview rather than making up their minds based on the facts they learn. Jewish institutions and Jews, he says, generally may be in for a period of wrestling with the competing demands of maintaining pluralist dialogue while battling pernicious myth. So I open this up for us today, knowing that this is only, be only the beginning, but also knowing that this is a conversation we need to be having every day, every week during this time when we're attempting to build a new world. We're living a part which makes it even harder to discern what is true and what is not, to know what's right and what is not. We rely on media and various news sources and we do the best we can to communicate with one another what we think is right. But still, there is so much work to be done in terms of figuring out what it means to live into truth and to discern it from falsehood. So this is my invitation to you and to our community in general, that we continue to have this conversation to dig into the sources, and there are so many in our tradition about what it means to be Anshe Emet. Shabbat Shalom.